right, so we're back. Judith, the Apocrypha, we're in the ninth chapter now through the second half of the service. Judith chapter nine and verse one. So now coming out, coming out of the eighth chapter, Judith has laid down some wisdom, kind of scolded the men to agree to bind themselves to an oath to tempt the most high to force his hand of when he should redeem or save Israel. Um, yeah. Oh. Well, not me. I probably ain't saying that, but I sent it out. Um, and that we shouldn't, you know, tempt the Lord in that manner. We should wait on the most high. Pray to him, but wait on his his salvation. In the meantime, um, you know, Judith is now giving herself, you know, up to go and now be the one that's going to redeem and redeem Israel by her hand and her waiting woman. That they were going to go and take this initiative to go and salvage what these men have done and entering into an oath <clears throat> and then go and get vengeance upon uh, the heathen for what they're trying to do to us, right? Mm -hmm. She left off by saying, don't ask me what I'm going to do until I come back. Then I'll disclose everything that I'm going to do, right? Because, you know, maybe they may say, oh, no, 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 we don't want you to do that. Da, da, da. So she said, I'm just going to go out, take this, take this voyage, and you'll see what happens when I come back. Or they may want to send some armies. Oh, yeah, send, send aid, right? That's like how Israel is. Israel is always about strength and numbers, right? So it's like, oh, we got it. Oh, you're going to go do what? No, we got to. We got as many with you. She's like, no, I'm not going to tell you anything. All right, so let's pick back up. Uh, chapter's pretty short. All right, so it says in Judith 9 and 1. Then Judith fell upon her face and put ashes upon her head and uncovered the sackcloth wherewith she was clothed. And about that time that the incense of the evening was offered in Jerusalem in the house of the Lord, Judith cried with a loud voice and said, right? So now um, she's now about to go do a prayer to the Most High before she enters into her enterprise. Like we read, same thing that happened during the time of Esther, but for Esther went, she went and prayed to the Most High, right? That's what we just read in Ecclesiasticus, that you always pray to the Most High that he may direct your paths, that he'll be there with you, that he'll defend you, that he'll fight for you. So now this is what Judith is doing as well. Before she goes out, she's going to pray to the Most High that he provides everything that is going to be necessary. First remembers the people that he, um, you know, called to put his name upon and all that we mean to him and what he means to us and that he would guide her in executing this this plan right so it says in verse two oh lord oh lord power of my father simeon right so now you're getting to know the tribe that judith comes from right because her father simeon was one of the twelve of Jacob, right? We call them so-called Dominicans today, right? So Judith was a beautiful, wise woman from the tribe of Simeon or the Dominicans. So, but she's about to recall what happened in the past in the history with her forefather and how they got vengeance upon the heathen for what they've done to us. And she's gonna ask the most high to do the same thing in this time. So again, it says, O Lord, power of my father Simeon, to whom thou gavest a sword to take vengeance of the strangers who loosened the girdle of a maid to defile her and discovered the thigh to her shame and polluted her virginity to her reproach. For thou saidest, it shall not be so, and yet they did so. Right? So now she's going into the story that you read about in Genesis 34. Right? Genesis 34th chapter. Um, verse one on down as it gets into whoever just dialed in or whoever on the line, can you please mute your lines? A little bit of feedback. Genesis 34 and one. So if you have your line open on the speaker, please mute it. 
star six or do your own mute? Water. So in Genesis 34 and 1, <clears throat> it says, And Dinah, the daughter of Leah, which she bare unto Jacob, went out to see the daughters of the land. So outside of the 12 tribes, the men, they had a sister, right? It was 12 brothers, but there was a sister that was there. Her name was Dinah. That's what we're reading about right now, right? It says, She went out to go and see the daughters of the land, to go and commune with the rest of the women that was around at that time. It says, and when Shechem, the son of Hamor the Hivite, prince of the country, saw her, he took her and lay with her and defiled her, right? So as she went out, this Hamite, who was a prince, a renowned man of their people, right. observed her and seen Dinah. And when it got Dinah and took Dinah and defiled Dinah by laying and sleeping with her being a stranger, Right. We know the strangers are un, you know, they're defiled. Right. They don't they don't keep the commandments of the most high. They're not a pure people like how we are righteous and pure in the most high's eyes. So when he went and did that, it now defiled her from her virginity, because that's not someone who the most high wanted anyone of our people to marry coming from J uh, Jacob's lineage. And then he took her without consent, wow. without going to. Jacob and saying, hey, this is your daughter. I want to take your daughter in marriage and so forth and so on. He just went and did it. Right. Verse three. And his soul clave unto Dinah, the daughter of Jacob, and he loved the damsel and he spake kindly unto the damsel. And Shechem spake unto his father, Hamor, saying, get me this damsel to wife. Right. So here it is. He went and like seeing this woman. Had lust on or whatever took her, laid with her, defiled her, right? Then he's like, man, I'm in love with this woman, right? Go to his pops, say, listen, we need to go get me that woman to wife, right? Meaning now I need you to take the necessary precautions to go and now find her, get her family involved so that I can take her legally to be my wife as the custom goes that you now have to go to the father to say, hey, I want your daughter. That's not something that's new right now. Like in today's time, it says, who gives this woman away? It's usually supposed to be the father because that's his seed, right? That was customary starting back then. That was in law that we did that. So he now wants to do that with Dinah and her pop. I like how you mentioned that, you know, of course, he's a Hamite. He's mm -hmm. not a Hebrew. Right. Oh, we are Hebrews because, of course, you know, who she's going to be with but a Hebrew. Right. Not, you know, Jacob. Because you know the patriarchs were there, right? So you have to be with somebody who's a Hebrew, right? So you can hold my pause here in Genesis. Go to Tobit. This is always the advice that most nations take, right? Most nations usually take this approach when it comes to marriage and giving in marriage, right? So this is uh, Tobit, the fourth chapter. I'm sorry, the yeah, the fourth chapter and the 12th verse. So we're in Genesis 34, one on. I'm paused, but then we're gonna I'm jumping to Tobit 4 and 12. So it says, Beware of all hoarding, my son. Number one, right? Don't go out there and just start dealing with women with no responsibility, just sleeping with women. Right. Beware of all whoredom. Refrain from it. Right. And take and chiefly take a wife of the seed of thy fathers. Right. Chiefly take a wife of the seed of thy father. So when you're dealing with other women, the women that you're going to marry, that you're going to wife has to be of your forefather, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob. And take not a strange woman to wife, any heathen, any foreigner. Right which is not of thy father's tribe, for we are of the children of the prophets, Noah, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, right? Remember, I think it was during the class when we were talking about all the nations and, and everybody comes from Adam, but then they all come from Noah and his sons. So now here, Tobit goes all the way back to Noah. We say Abraham, Isaac, Jacob.
Jacob, but now as he's of that line from yes, right? We all come from that line. From Adam. Thank you, bro. So now it says, Remember my son that our fathers from the beginning, even that they all married wives of their own kindred and were blessed in their children, and their seed shall inherit the land. Right? So that was the intent back to who we just named. That they chiefly took win of their own kindred, of their own people, right? To wife. You give your sons to the daughters of the people that you come from. You give your daughters to the sons of the people that you come from, which was Israel, right? Now I said before, a lot of people usually take this approach. When you look at Moab, Moab normally marries within Moab. When you look at Ishmael, Ishmael normally marries within Ishmael. So forth and so on, when you start looking at the variety of certain nations, they like to, they predominantly prefer to marry within their own people to keep their culture their customs and everything pure, right? So it says here, 13, now therefore, my son, love thy brethren and despise not in thine heart thy brethren, thy the sons and daughters of the pe of thy people and not taking a wife of them. For in pride is destruction and much trouble and in lewdness is decay and great want for lewdness is the mother of famine, right? So being a prideful person to say, I know better than, than God, or I know better than you, right? Love don't have no color, love don't have this. So he warns his son and says, look, for in pride is much destruction and much trouble. You thinking you know, boy, you know better than the minimum, you know better than the most high. Prideful mind that gets you behind in trouble. Then it says, for in pride, I mean, for, and in lewdness is decay and great want. So you run around there and doing that stuff that you think that is probably because that's how society is, and you're going to find yourself in trouble. You're going to find yourself in despair and in lacking a lot, right? That's what usually happens um, now. It's kind of what we were talking about at the um, Holy Day when we was up at uh, at the uh, hotel when we had that discussion about when uh, Robert Kwa was talking about, why do brothers put themselves in trouble by going dealing with these Edomite women? They know what happens. Why do they do it, right? Prideful. Some, and you could go down a line, a list of a list of things why we enter into that, right? But the guidance was here to refrain because you'll get yourself in trouble. You're gonna get yourself in trouble, and you'll find yourself lacking way more than you anticipate. And that's what happens now. You go get them and find out what happened. They done took you to court for everything that you got, right? Now you find yourself on the opposite end of what you thought your your uh, possessions are. Now they own it, or you find yourself in jail. Yeah, that's when an Edomite, heathen, you know, heathen on, but predominantly Edomite, but the heathen ones, right? So that's the, that's what the 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 wisdom says to just try to deal within your own. Now, somebody will say, "Well, you trying what you're saying, and you ain't gonna find no problems within your own people." Yeah, you will, right? You are gonna find some problems with men or women because they're not in tune with the scriptures. They're not. They don't have the mind of the Most High. When you don't have the mind of the Most High, the spirit of the Most High, the heart of the Most High. Everything can go wrong. Everything can go wrong, right? So you always want to at least have that 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 triband of you yourself and the Most High to join everything together to at least try to steer the ship the right way, right? So that was Tobit chapter four verses twelve to thirteen. We're gonna go back to Genesis thirty-four. Genesis 34. Remember, I went there and I said we we're going to come back. I just paused. Oh, okay. So it says, uh, verse 5, and Jacob heard that he had defiled Dinah, his daughter. Now his sons were with his cattle in the field, and Jacob held his peace until they came, till they were come. And Hamor, the father of Shechem, went out unto Jacob to commune with him. And the sons of Jacob came, came out of the field when they heard it, and, were, and the men were very grieved. And they were very wroth because he had wrought folly in Israel and lying with Jacob's daughter, which thing ought not to be done, right? Mm -hmm. That they were supposed to now go and take this their sister, defile her, right? Them not being of their kindred, right? Of their people. Right. As much as that, you know, people who are God-fearing people, they're servants of God. When you read the Bible, the servants of the Most High were Israel, Right? But now here it is, we all Africans, we all this, we Egyptians, this, that, and the third. 
Well, here it is. These people were veered as being undefiled to the most highest people. Right. So if we're all the same, well, why does this initiation happen? Then it should be OK. It wouldn't be a problem then if they went and married this Hivite. Right. Who comes out of the same people that we're claiming to be today. But these men, these brothers knew it was wrong to go and have their sister go and be with somebody. It's like, what is that in the uh, was that movie that uh, Jungle Fever when uh, when uh, Wesley Snipes got with the, the Italian chick yeah. and her family found out about it. Oh, yeah. That wrought folly amongst their family. From the exactly, that was her choice to go and do that, right? To say she's gonna go be with him, and they, they jacked him up, jacked her up. But now it feels reversed, right? And he went and took her, like raped her, right? Oh, her brothers in that whole town would have been what on the war path to go and take his behind out, right? Yup, kill them all. So now with that same mentality, right? Because it's a break of, of how you know we thought from the past to how now we're progressive or going to the future and how we should all be a melting pot and everything else. So that's where that movie kind of hinted on, right? But now it's the same thing here where this man went and raped their sister. So now they find out about it. And they're like, yo, what? This guy raped our sister, man? And not only that, here. He's in a Hittite. So now I'm reading verse eight, and Hamar communed with them, saying, "The soul of my, the soul of my son Shechem longeth for your daughter. I pray you give her, him to wife, and make ye marriages with us, and give your daughters unto us, and take our daughters unto you." So we know in Deuteronomy the seventh chapter, the Most High said, "Don't give your son to their daughters, or their daughters to your sons." That's law. If you forgot, I'm reminding you, right? So it says. And ye shall dwell with us, and the land shall be before you. Dwell and trade ye therein, and get your possessions. And Shechem said unto their father and unto their brethren, Let me find grace in your eyes. What shall ye say unto me? I will give. Ask me never so much dowry and gift, and I will give according to ye, shall giving according as ye shall say unto me, but give me the damsel to wife. So they're like, don't even worry about money of, 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 of dowry. <laughs> Whatever you ask, I'll pay it. Whatever thing you want, I'll give it. Just give me your daughter to wife, right? Right, because this is the son who went and raped her, but now he 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 loves her. That's like how you see sometimes certain celeb people have a they become a fanatic, right? They look at somebody from a distance and they see them a lot and they like them and they lust after them, yeah. right? The lust then turns into some now a action where they go and they stalk a person. And then they want to be with the person. They see themselves with the person. They break into their houses and do all kinds of things. Now they got to get restraining orders and everything. But now if opportunity presented itself and they broke in and that person's laying in the bed sleep, they may go and do what? Rape that person. Now they don't rape them, but then it's like, oh man, I don't, I'm, I was with such and such. I want to be with her. I want to marry her. I hope that she now sees that we can be together. It's not far-fetched because it's happened in real life. You had a person break in or rape someone and then now try to talk them into being in a relationship. Okay. This was in the news. I was like, yo, <laughs> right? It happens. So now here it is, this heathen now raped their sister, his daughter, and now they're trying to make it right by saying, let them marry. I'll pay you what you want. I'll give you what you want, mm -hmm. right? So again, the same concept of the mind thinking of what the men from Jungle Fever, how they depicted it in that movie, and he ain't, and they ain't, he ain't rape her. No. She chose to be with him, right. right? And how they was furious and angry and everything else, right? Right. Um, but even okay. Go ahead. yeah, even back in the days in in the fifties and the sixties and so on and so forth, they had laws against it. Yeah. They had to in certain cities the law I against in, laws intermarriage. Against huh? The only question I would ask you. God got laws against that, right? God got. When the first all said, you said, tell me to plan, mm -hmm. we'll get something to mess with all the people. That's what we just, I just said. No, 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 what do you call it? Segregationist. That's okay. Mm -mm. It's okay to be segregationist. It's 
it's wrong to to give somebody else more than we all supposed to be. Um, to give one group more, but it's okay to separate yourself mm -hmm. from another group of people. Right. And I like, want to bring everybody. Uh, Deuteronomy thirty-two. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. 32 and 8. Kabar, you read that. When the Most High divided to the nations their inheritance, mm -hmm. when he separated the sons of Adam. He did what? Separated the sons of Adam. That's like to be segregated, right? You're in your own areas, your own lands, doing your own thing, worshiping your own gods, yeah. following your own customs and your culture. Read. He set the bounds of the people mm -hmm. according to the number of the children of Israel. Right. So now to go back to your point, it's a little bit kind of gray when we talk about it today, right? Because one would say, yeah, it's cool, right? It's not a problem. But what happened with us? specifically is they, didn't, they wanted us to be segregated but they didn't really want us to be independent right that's the problem right that's the problem right if you say hey you can't drink with us you can't eat with us you can't shop with us you can't party with us you can't do this with us you got to do everything to the back door you got to stay in your own areas right all right so yeah you now we're segregated then when we start thinking and say we're going to do for ourselves be for ourselves get our own money do our own bangers like you can't do that either but everybody else do it. <laughs> Why we can't do it, right? Because this is the part of the curse. So it's twofold in the manner of how we see it from a society point of view and then how we see it from the most high's point of view, right? The purpose of the most high is what now to frame this condition because we had to be on the bottom, right? To fulfill the curse, right? You was once on the top, but now you're on the bottom of everybody. So you, if you did, what, if we did want to do that without the most high, right? And we say, listen, we're going to be segregated and we're going to be independent. We're going to sustain ourselves. Slowly but surely, we will find ourselves rising to the top. Rising right back to the top. So the Lord's like, mm, no, nah, I'm going to have them. No, y'all can't do that either. <laughs> so now it put us right back, right back down in the bottom in front of everybody. Right. So that's why I said it's, it's two views to look at it from our view of how it is now that they're posing these different tactics and laws and stuff upon us. Then the most high's view. See, you should have done better and you wouldn't have had to go through this. Mm -hmm. Right. This is the agreement that you entered in. Now it got to happen. Right. And we plan. We paying for it. Yeah, we'll come on. Oh, it's a lot. Uh, it's a car. And verse 32. Verse 32, verse 8. Come on. Hey. Go ahead, uh, y'all. Can I? Because we had Black Wall Street. Mm -hmm. We are, we said, okay, we're going to do our own. We're mm -hmm. going to do our, our own thing. So we were successful at a point. If the government came and didn't like that and, right. and bombed it. And bombed it. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then it's like, you know, when we ask to get loans to do businesses, mm -hmm. they say, okay, show me assets. <laughs> I need more of you proving to me that you're worthy for me to get this loan. And you say, well, I need to get the loan to kind of build up my assets. And it's like, no, nah, sorry. But then you'll get the same people who you have labeled as being terrorists. You have deemed them to be the ones who are now infringing upon us and trying to do everything. They can come over here and guess what they get? They get the loan to open up their businesses right in our neighborhoods that you said we can't do it. Right. Yeah, yeah. They come right in our neighborhoods and have all these franchises and businesses right in our face. So it's like a slap in the face. Like, no, you can't have it. Right. So reading on, I'm not going to read the whole thing. Um, reading on in Genesis 34 and 14, it says, and they said unto them, we cannot do this thing to give our sister to what is uncircumcised for that were for that were a reproach unto us to go and what? mingle with the other nations, right? It says, verse 15, but in this we will consent unto you, if ye will be as we be, that every male of you be circumcised. Then will we give our daughters unto you, and we will
your daughters to us and we will dwell with you and we will become one people. But if you will not hearken us unto us to be circumcised, then we will take our daughter and we'll be gone. Right. So as you read further down, right, this is all a setup because they knew that they was going to do it because they wanted Dinah to give to their um, Shechem son. But the whole ploy was that when they go and circumcise all these males, once you get circumcised, you still you're still healing. You're not in your physical. You're not up to par in physical. You need time to heal. So once they went and circumcised these men, Simeon and Levi and them went in and murdered and slew all of them to pay vengeance for what they did to their sister Dinah and raping her. And now they're going to say, oh, we want her to, her, her to wife. So they was upset and they slew those males. So this is what Judith is now recalling at this time that we're reading here in this storyline and back, back in Judith, the um, ninth chapter. So let's go back. So what did I stop? I stopped at 30. Seventeen. So back at verse two again, it says, O Lord, God of my father Simeon, to whom thou gavest a sword to take vengeance of the strangers who loosened the girdle of a maid to defile her and to discover the thigh to her shame and polluted her virginity to her reproach. For thou saidest it shall not be so. And yet they did so. Wherefore thou gavest their rulers to be slain, so that they died their bed in blood, being deceived, and smote us the servants with their lords and the lords upon their thrones. So again, that's where they was deceived by Simeon and Levi and the rest of the brothers to, to agree to go and have everybody to be circumcised like how we get circumcised. And then while they were recuperating or recovering from the from the uh circumcision, they went and killed them all, right? <clears throat> Verse four, and has given their wives for a prey and their daughters to be captives and all their spoils to be divided upon among thy dear children. So when that happened, they now became tributaries unto us, captives and slaves, right? It says, which were moved with thy zeal and abhorred the pollution of their blood and called upon thee for aid. O power, hear me also a widow. So they were moved, Simeon and Levi, they were moved with the zeal of the Most High to do what they did, right? In their anger, the Most High's vengeance came through. It wasn't just their vengeance. It was the Most High's vengeance that caused them to go and do that because it was something that was not supposed to go down, right? Verse um, five, right? So now she's saying, do that same thing with her, right? Give me that zeal, like how you gave it to Simeon and Levi. Who, the, who, who was taking vengeance for their sister Dinah. Give it to me, O oh my power, me who's a widow. Verse five, but thou hast wrought not only those things, but also the things which fell out before and which ensued after. Thou hast thought upon the things which are now and which are to come. So everything is under your control, Mosiah. You think and see everything that happens, every purpose, every plan, it comes from you. So now take this one and put it to your will as well. Verse six, determined we're ready at hand and said, lo, we are here for all thy ways are prepared and thy judgments are in thy foreknowledge. For behold, the Assyrians are multiplied in their power. They are exalted with horse and man. They are glory in the strength of their footmen. They trust in shield and spear and bow and sling and know not that thou art the Lord that breakest the battles the Lord is thy name. So it's almost similar to the same thing that you read in Maccabees. In the book of the Maccabees. I think it's first Maccabees. Mm -hmm. where Judas said the same thing about how the heathens um, trusted in their weapons. Mm 
Mm hmm. Maccabees. What in the Psalms? Yeah, I know in the Psalms, but I never know the Maccabees. Yeah, it's one in the Maccabees. What's the one in the Psalms you have? All right, so I found it. Second Maccabees. Eight. Second Maccabees eight sixteen to eighteen. Chapter eight, verse sixteen to eighteen. So Second Maccabees chapter eight, verse sixteen. So it says, So Maccabees called his men together unto the number of six thousand and exhorted them not to be stricken with terror of the enemy nor to fear the great multitude of the heathen who came wrongfully against them, but to fight manfully and set and to set before their eyes the injury that they had unjustly done to the holy place and the cruel handling of the city, whereof they made a mockery and also the taking away of the government of their forefathers. Verse 18, for they, said he, trust in their weapons and boldness, but our confidence is in the almighty God who at a beck can cast down both them that come against us and also the all the and also all the world, right? So they all trust with their carnal devices. We trust in the most high who has control over everything. He can cast them down and the rest of the whole world. So this is kind of what Judith is alluding to, how these heathens are going to trust in their weapons, but the most high provides us the strength of battle. All right. So verse eight now, it says, throw down their strength in thy power and bring down their force in thy wrath. For they have purposed to defile thy sanctuary and to pollute the tabernacle where it where thy glorious name resteth, and to cast down with sword the horn of thine altar. So it's almost the same thing as we're reading that we just read in Maccabees. I didn't want it to defile the city and its sanctuary and everything else. Yeah. Hmm? Behold their pride and send thy wrath upon their heads. Given to mine hand, which am a widow, the power that I have conceived, right? So it's the same thing that Esther did. That the Most High would be with her as she went in to go to see Ahasuerus. Judith is asking for the same power and wisdom as she goes in to deal with Holofernes. Verse 10, smite by the deceit of my lips the servant with the prince, and the prince with the servant. Break down their stateliness by the hand of a woman, right? So give her the words to be able to deceive this man and give her the power which he may be going to smite this man, right? It says, for thy power standeth not in multitude, nor thy might in strong men. For thou art a power of the afflicted and helper of the oppressed and upholder of the weak, a protector of the forlorn, a savior of them that are without hope, right? So the most high can bring the strength of battle. It doesn't always have to be with a man. He can use a woman too. Doesn't always have to be with a woman. He can use animals if he chose to, insects if he chose to, to go forth and show his might to bring down strongholds, right? So again, it's the same thing that, and, and, and this, in this prayer that she's praying, right? You always notice that, you know, um, 
prophets and prophetesses remember, you know, the things that the Most High has done for us. They always remind the Most High about us being his people and where his chosen and, and, and what he how he's always defended us. Then they will always, you know, give the Most High his his glory, praise the Most High about how he is the only, the omnipotent, and there's no one above the Most High, right? And then ask for the mercy and the grace and the measure to be pushed upon us in our solemn state, right? So you'll see that being done repetitively by different men and women in their prayer to the Lord, right? So sometimes when you're looking to how to pray, just take examples of all those that came before us and how they went before the Lord. Verse 12, I pray thee, I pray thee, O power of my father and power of the inheritance of Israel, Lord of heavens and earth, creator of the waters, king of every creature, hear thou my pride, my prayer. So again, this is, you know, giving the most high his praise and all these titles, he's all of this, right? Always want to make sure the Lord recognizes that we see him as he is, like his name. And it says, I am the Lord. I am Yahweh. I am the one who exists before anything, right? You have to make sure that you recognize and, and, and give that to the Lord, right? 13, and make my speech and deceit to be their wound and stripe, who have purposed cruel things against thy covenant and thy hallowed house and against the top of Sion and against the house of the possession of the, thy children, right? So she's praying for the temple. First, the covenant that we've made, that, that that doesn't dissolve by them coming and taking us out. The temple, the government, and the people as a whole. That's who she's praying for. Verse 14, and make every nation, oh, Salah. Yeah, here what she says is my speech and deceit. Right. So now when you look at... When you look at, you know, uh, deception, right? Because you see, you have certain certain prophets, certain men, women, who've used deceit and righteousness, right? Because sometimes you'll say to be deceitful, if you want to go and deceive somebody, that's wicked, right? But in this case, being wise as a serpent has its benefit, where you can now say, I'm going to go in and be wiser than them to deceive them for our enterprise or for our cause, like King David did, right? Like Judith is doing here, right? Like many other men who are in the situation, the circumstances that they were in to defend Israel, you go all out, especially defend Israel, the Most High's name and righteousness, you go all out. You know how sometimes, I don't know if y'all pay attention, they got this, uh, this, these slogans, these t-shirts um, where it says, uh, like Philly against everybody else or something to that effect, right? But it's anything, whether it's a sports team, a city, a country, it's like this against everybody. In this case, it's Israel against everybody, right? We're going to stand together. We're going to fight together against everybody. Whatever it takes for us to sustain ourselves in righteousness with the Most High, we're going to do it. If it causes me, I got to trick you to save us, you're going to get tricked. You're going to get deceived. You're going to make a fool of, right? And righteousness. We're not doing it amongst ourselves. We're not deceiving one another. Mm -hmm. We're deceiving them because according to the most high, they're worthless anyway. But remember, remember times we went to spy out the land and also with, um, with Rahab the harlot, mm -hmm. we went to spy out and we were able to go, to go there and she was able to hide us because we didn't just want to just walk in there like that. Right. We went stealthily in there, and then we went stealthily out. Mm -hmm. And they didn't, you know, they didn't, you know, they didn't know that, you know, they didn't find us and things like that. Right. So, deceitful to certainly, stealthily going there and came, out, came back out. Oh. All power and might, and that there is none other that protected the people of Israel but thou. Right, make everybody aware that you are the one who defends and protects us, and not man. Right, not an army, not the soldiers, not weapons. Right, it's the Most High that does it. 
That's why it says, and make every nation and tribe to acknowledge that thou art the power of all power and might. It all comes from the most high. It don't come from devices or man's thoughts or, you know, none of that. It comes from the most high. Once you realize and recognize that and you believe and you trust in that, then the Lord will work miracles and wonders with you or for you on your behalf. All right. So that concludes Judith, the ninth chapter. Concludes today's Sabbath service lesson. Next week, we'll be in Deuteronomy chapters, what did I say? Four and five or five and six? Five and six, Deuteronomy, right? Also remember, following the Sabbath service next week, that following Sunday sundown is a day of atonement, right? Fasting for 24 hours from sunup down to sundown, right? Sundown Sunday. On Sunday night, I think it's the 6th, Sunday night, we will be fasting from sundown Sunday to sundown Monday night, right? And all and uh, to make reconciliation to the Most High for all of our transgressions and our sins, all right? Um, and then that following Friday is the Feast of the Tabernacles, all right? Um, again, remind, reminders, don't, we can't be, you got to be, but more diligent, we have to become more diligent in uh, providing our offerings for the holy days, our free will offerings out of our own hearts, tides, whatever, to be able to sustain what we have going on. Right. So I mentioned it it's third or fourth time now. It's a reminder that uh, we make sure we we um we do that and and with the feast of the tabernacles we all know that you know that's one of the main four holy days that we come up that we provide a hundred dollar feast donation for that day hundred dollar feast donation passover is 200 but the rest are 100 all right so keep that in mind all right so with that we're going to say uh stay tuned for the closing prayers uh i saw i'm gonna say happy sabbath Happy new moon, happy memorial blown of the trumpets as today uh, is all three wrapped in one. All right, all three of them are wrapped in one today. Uh, so it's a triple a triple high holy day, right? Sabbath, new moon, memorial blown of the trumpets. So again, continue to enjoy the rest of the day until sundown. Um, it is a Sabbath, but you can cook. Uh, the brother asked last night, you know, he, he saw in the scriptures where it says it's, it's a festive, you know, it's like a party. Can we go party? Right. Remember, and it's a holy convocation. So sure, you know, on 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 the feast day, you can play music, you know, that's that spiritual or things that's going to be have a good righteous vibe to it. Right. You know, have food, commune, you know, so forth and so on. Praise the Lord and have all those things going on in a holy convocation festive occasion and not in the carnal. What goes on at the clubs where you getting plastered with with uh shots and everything else and you can't <laughs> and you can't think you stumbling out the dog on place that's that's kind of how, how we party out in the world that's not what we do um with the most highs feast days right there's still there's still decorum there's still a level of of respect and honor we representing the most high so we want to keep his name clean from all added you know nonsense that doesn't have to be associated to his name based on actions that we inflict Right. So with that, I guess say uh, Shalom. Stay tuned for the closing prayers. Barakatha Yahweh, Ba Hashem Yahweh Shai, Asherah, Nathalanawa, Par Yahweh, Gapit, Tawada Amun.
La Yahweh Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Af, Yasha Allah. I might have put you on Roshlin, stand and face Jerusalem. Jerusalem is towards the rising of the sun, wherever the sun rises. Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Baba Kushai, Shemai, Lenawa, Aitha, Yam Yan, Aitha, Shalat, Micah Allah, Waha Allah Hayim, Tazwadakim, La, Shema Isle, Barat, Rapa, Magan, Rahakazayat, Bunya, Yasha Allah, Washalat, Lenawa, Rabim, Kakama, Rabim, Da'ai, Rabim, Bayana, Rabim, Sabalanwa, Rabim, Amawan, Rabim, Aqua, Rabim, Ahabim, Rabim, Haganah, Rokhanaya, Wasalat, Kaum, Kata'ayanawa, Laha Akim, Wayasha'ala, Tamyat, Wayulam, Bahasham, Jehawashai, Thawada, Amun. Jehawah, the name of Jehawashai, please listen to us now, right now. Send Michael and the righteous powers of angels to watch over, bless, heal, protect, and make strong the children of Israel. And send to us much wisdom, much knowledge, much understanding, much patience, much faith, much brotherhood, much love, much spiritual protection, and forgive all our sins for the brothers and sisters in Israel always and forever. In the name of Yahweh Shah, thank you so big. Yahweh, Bashem, Yahweh Shah, Barak Nawa, Bayasha Allah, Wabat Yasaparim, Shama Yasharella, Yahawa, Allah Hayanawa, Yahawa, all right, English translation. Most high the name of Christ, bless us in Israel in the house of books or schools and Deuteronomy 6 and 4, which says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our power is one power. Again, we say shalom, Yashallah, and enjoy the feast days for today. Shalom. Shalom.